because Vlad Dracul has arrived. Hello friends, this week we're going to talk about summer friendly yarns. Because Vlad Dracul has arrived. And by that I mean it's Dracula summer. Hello crafty friends, how are you guys doing? And as I said, welcome to this week's video where we are going to be talking about summer friendly, or summer appropriate, or yarns that I recommend for the summer months. As many of you are familiar, I tend to work in, in tropical weather friendly yarns and that is because most of my life I've lived in tropical areas. I am from Puerto Rico and I currently live in Florida. So, and I'm, by that I mean Florida, US, not Florida, Puerto Rico, because anyway, Yes, so uh, yeah, still hot, still not very much fall or winter, so yeah, I tend to not have appropriate clothes for winter and then sometimes I don't have appropriate clothes for summer either, but today I wanted to share with you some of my approved summer yarns, shall we say. These are yarns that I've worked with before. I've worn plenty and have put through the Florida heat test as well as the Puerto Rico heat test and hey, they've made it to this list. So, but before we get into all that summer yarny goodness, welcome number one to new and existing subscribers and watchers. Also news, Summer Romance Cow will begin this Sunday, this coming Sunday. Today is Monday, March 30th, and the next Sunday we will have a Romance Summer Cow. Okay, it will begin. So what that means is that this this Wednesday I will be opening up the Ravelry Chatter thread. I We'll link down below the videos to the two Summer Romance Cow specials that I recorded with Claudia of Crochet Luna. Um, number one is in her channel and number two is in my channel. In case you've missed it, you can check those out and find out everything there is to know about the Summer Romance Cow. Find out dates, what the Summer Romance Cow is, what you can work on, what you can do, just what you can chat about. Everything and anything will be in those two videos and I will open the Ravelry thread, as I said, on June 1st. So, another bit, another bit of news, I am recording on a Monday. I know I mentioned before that I like recording on a Monday, but this week it's because tomorrow is my anniversary. My husband and I have been married for three years already, and that is crazy to believe. We got married on May 31st, 2019. So yeah, three years. <laughs> really, really has flown by. I'm trying to think if I have any other announcements to share with you. And yes, I do. The Maya sock pattern, insert picture, editing Clarissa, please, is available. It is available to purchase from We Crochet, Ravelry, Etsy, and of course you can get a free version of the pattern on my blog. If you choose to purchase the pattern, it comes with a gorgeous YouTube masterclass where I take you from toe to cuff, or in you know this case from toe to leg, because the Maya sock pattern does not have a cuff. That was a personal design choice, so if you do like your socks with your socks, socks with cuffs, then feel free to add one. I have other written sock patterns that have <laughs> that have instructions on how to work up a cuff so you can follow along or if you're feeling super adventurous you can knit a cuff. For that I recommend 9 inch circular needles. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that this week's episode is able to provide to provide you with a little bit of reprieve from the world and a little bit of a crafty cocoon and bubble. Please grab your beverage of choice. So before we get into all the summer yarny goodness, there are a few things I want to say. So disclaimer number one, these are yarns, as I said, that I've worked with before and I really enjoy 
wearing during the summer months. And these, as I said, are my preferences. We all have different opinions and I would love to know what you actually enjoy wearing during the summer months in the description box, no, in the comment section down below. And I mean summer for us in the Northern Hemisphere. I know that our friends in the summer he Southern Hemisphere are actually going towards the winter months or is it already winter? Has the winter solstice happened for you guys? Did the summer solstice happen for us? You can see how out of, how out of touch with everything I am, but to we'll begin with the second disclaimer. Summer appropriate is, of course, very dependent on you as an individual and what you can tolerate and what you can't tolerate during the summer months. But I also think it depends on hook size you're using and the stitch you are using. If you're using a very dense stitch, even a fingering weight yarn might not make your garment summer appropriate. However, maybe you're using a kind of open stitch like the summer fan top right here and that will, you know, let wind flow and you'll feel refreshed. That will be perfect for summer. And the third disclaimer is that I will mainly be discussing fingering weight, sport weight yarns, and up to a light DK, because these are the yarns, again, that I prefer to work with during the summer. I, I try very hard to become a designer that actually works ahead of the season, so right now, technically, I should be working in fall projects, but... Uh, <laughs> I know that We've discussed this before and several of you were very kind and awesomely commented that yes, you work off season. So in your summer months, you work towards your winter clothes and one very enterprising person even said that she works on her Christmas presents during June, which by the way, hats off to you because that is smart and that is what we all should do if we plan to give presents away because honestly, it's never enough time. So back to our summer friendly yarns. Now, I'm going to begin with fingering weight yarns and then work our way up to sport weight like DK, okay? So first up in the fingering weight yarn range, we have fingering weight cotton. Now I specifically recommend working in fingering weight cotton blends, and I'll get into that pretty quickly. Bye by bringing up to your attention the summer fan top. You've seen me wear her, you've seen me talk, you've heard me talk about her. We know about this top. So the summer fan top was originally designed to use a cotton cashmere blend fingering weight that I bought off Amazon because it was very affordable. I thought it brought five balls of yarn, 50 gram balls, and it was around 20, 22 dollars. So I honestly didn't think it was so, so badly priced. And I actually just used 200 grams for this version. This is a size one version. So the summer fan top, as I said, uses that cotton cashmere. And I find it more breathable than the technically third version of the summer fan top that I made. which is this one, this one that I promised I would share with you because it is a different construction than the original summer fan top. This one has a high collar, not a boat neck collar, and the sleeves are different as well. It starts bottom up, the same construction. But anyway, this yarn, yes, this yarn is Drops Saffron, classified as a sport weight cotton, but when you hold it up with a sport weight wool, it's a lot thinner. So I would just classify it as a heavy fingering weight cotton. And that is one thing to note. Not all fingering weight yarns were created equal. Sometimes you have thinner fingering weight yarns, but the wrap per inch still lets them fall into the fingering weight yarn range. So that is also something you can think about. Now, this Drops Saffron is 100% cotton, which, honestly, I find hotter than this cotton cashmere blend. This is, as I said, 90% cotton, 10% cashmere, and that 10% cashmere gives it softness and a lot more breathability, and I just feel less 
sweaty when I wear this top. Yes, I'm talking about sweat because it's summer. We all sweat. Nothing weird about that. <laughs> um, and this other top, because it is made with 100% cotton yarn, the fabric is a lot denser. And I'm going to be, you can see the pictures on the screen that they just really look denser. And keep in mind, this top back here was crocheted with a 3.25 millimeter hook and this one was crocheted with a 3.5 millimeter hook. So technically this fabric should be less dense because it is made with a bigger hook. That is not the case, but that is because 100% cotton fabric tends to be denser. And I mean 100% cotton yarn tends to create a denser fabric. So it's not that I wouldn't use 100% cotton yarn, fingering weight yarn, during the summer months. It's just that I prefer a cotton blend. It doesn't matter what the blend is. I've used cotton bamboo blends, I've used cotton cashmere blends, I've used cotton acrylic blends, I've used cotton wool blends. Just a blend of cotton I find has a lot more drapiness and breathability than 100% cotton yarn. And actually, that brings me up to my second show and tell. Oh, um, sorry, before we move on, just a quick review on a cotton cashmere. It tends to pill. Yeah, it tends to pill a little bit around the sleeve area, but that's because any cotton blend yarn tends to pill more than 100% cotton. Usually, I think that what pills is the cashmere in this case. But nonetheless, I would still prefer this cotton cashmere yarn blend to the 100% cotton fiber. I honestly feel that just 10% wool of any kind added to cotton makes for a much better yarn. Incidentally, if I were ever to create a yarn line, I already know that I want my yarn to be, at least one of the ranges, to be 90% cotton, 10% wool. Um, I'm focusing more on the wool aspect of it instead of the cashmere because cashmere is very specific. It tends to come from just a small part of the goat, so the go goat's coat, so more expensive, less accessible, but also if you were using just wool in general, it can be different blends of fiber and it doesn't have to be so breed specific. Yes, I've given my own yarn line plenty of thought. No, I do not have the income to actually create it. Trust me, I, I called a mill. Anyway, back to cotton blends. The next one that I have for you is a top that has been pretty popular with you guys as well. It's not my own design. It's designed by the lovely Sandra of Nomad Stitches, who is currently in Mexico, and I hope that she's having a grand old time. So this is the Mosaica Ganesh top. Now, originally, Sandra designed this, designed this pattern to work with fingering weight wool and a five millimeter hook, which you wouldn't believe, but actually makes it very breathable because it's not so close to your body and it's very drapey and just kind of slinky. So you don't feel restricted in the wool as you would in say a wool sweater. At least I feel a bit more restricted in like a wool sweater than I do with just wool accents in a cotton garment. So what I did with this one, because again, I live in Florida, is that I combined wool and cotton. So I used fingering weight wool yarns for the color work portion of the top. And for the main color of the top, I went with a Knit Picks or We Crochet Comfy Fingering, which is a very light fingering weight cotton acrylic blend. I really recommend it. It's perfect for summer wear. Again, it does tend to pill because it is a very soft, fine yarn, but uh, you can take care of pills relatively easy, so it's not something that really bothers me. And they have um, a lot of ranges in this, a lot of colors in this range. <laughs> So that, the fact that I combined wool and cotton for this top did make it much more accessible for me during the summer months. I honestly wear this in the height of summer and I've had no problems with it. But again, it's because the main portion of the body is made with a fingering weight cotton blend. 
I will say though that uh, I thought I had gauge with the five millimeter hook and then I just had to keep going down until I'm pretty sure I did the top portion in 3.75 millimeter hook. So um, I probably could have gone for a four millimeter and then a 3.75, but that's just something to consider in the future. Um, what else can I tell you about this top? I've had it for a while and I honestly do not think It looks bad at all. I really, really like this top. And I like the fact that it's combining cotton and wool because I have a lot of wool in my stash from past Clarissa when she first started and bought all the indie dyed yarn possible. Um, I have beef with her because I think she should have curated it more, especially because now I just have muted colors and I, I like my brights, unless they're combined with neutrals. So this fact that I combined cotton and wool for the Mosaico Ganesh top brings me up to a um, kind of unexpected garment to have during the summer, but it wasn't bad to wear. I actually recorded a reel about it, which I will link down below if you're interested in that. And I will also put the little video here next to me about me um, wearing this top. So you guys have seen this one before as well. I've received many a compliment and I know several people that messaged me and said they decided to crochet this top based on the version I had made, which is a very high compliment indeed. And I am very, very honored to have inspired you to make a crochet sea glass tee. This is a design by Woolen Pine Designs. It is the crochet version of the sea glass tee, which is why it's called crochet sea glass tee. Um, and it's meant to use scraps. So you use a one by one color work. So you change color every stitch, which honestly can be very slow in crochet, but it was fun. It was fun and it was a great way to just combine different colors of yarn and have them all go together in this merry top. <laughs> Now again, this is a fingering weight wool top and it is crocheted with a five millimeter hook, which once again turned out to be too big for the body of the sweater, but it was fine for up to the yoke. So for the, after I broke for the sleeves, um, I actually switched to a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. I think I could have started the top with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and then decreased to a four millimeter crochet hook and I would have been just fine because while I started working the top, I still was new to this one by one color work technique. So um, I held my yarn very tightly, but the more I got used to the technique, the looser my gauge became. And of course, after I blocked it, we've got a very breezy, flowy garment. Now, uh, ends aren't woven in, but we're ignoring that because that has no weight on the fact that I, actually wore the sweater in 88 degrees Fahrenheit and what bothered me was the pants that I paired the sweater with not the sweater itself and I was sitting directly in the sunlight for a portion of this experiment so there is that now I'm not saying everybody can wear wool during the summer I'm, I'm still skeptical about wearing wool in anything higher than 85 degrees. It's just the thought of that. Just the thought of wearing wool makes me a little bit itchy, but I would have to conduct a further experiment to see if I can actually wear wool in 90 degrees, which who knows? Maybe because this is a crop top, it's got short sleeves, and it's made using a big hook, which produces a very drapey fabric, as you can see. So these are my, some of my fingering weight garments, some of them in wool, some of them in cotton wool blends, and some of them just 100% cotton. Next up, let's go to a higher weight of yarn. And for that, I have three tops to share with you. Two are of my own, well, I've made them all. One of them is my own design. 
and the other is a vintage pattern. So I'm going to start with the original one of the flower child top. So the flower child top was made with Shine Sport, a, again a We Crochet official yarn, and it is a cotton modal blend. Modal is a beechwood fiber, so it's naturally derived as well. Now the name of this yarn is misleading, it states Shine Sport, but the yardage is more equivalent to a DK weight yarn than a sport weight yarn. However, the drape of this, the feel of it, is buttery, luxurious, and soft, so I'm still going to give it points for being very wearable during the summer. And it's honestly a lot more breathable than the cotton acrylic blends that are DK weight that I've made garments in. This just has a softer feel to it, so it just feels like it breathes better. Now again, because this yarn is a cotton blend, it does pill. But actually, most of my garments tend to pill in the underarm area, or if I'm using a purse, they tend to pill where the purse rubs the shirt. But I think that for having worn this a lot during last year's summer months, this was the 2020 design, or 2021 design, it has held up pretty, pretty well. And so, of course, I had to make another one. And this time, We Crochet very kindly sent me some yarn to try, and also to just showcase the new colors of the range, which are going to show up at their store in April. The new yarn colors come out in August. Please stay tuned. And this is Galileo. Galileo is a true sport weight, and what I mean by that is that the yardage is between a fingering weight and a DK weight yarn, and the weight is also between a fingering weight and a DK weight yarn. So for this sport weight yarn, Galileo is a wool bamboo blend. It's true sport weight, as I said, and I really really enjoyed working with it. I shared this over on Instagram quite a bit and I'm still just as in love with it. Now of course I haven't worn this one as much as the DK weight version of it just because I haven't had it as long but just holding them together this wool bamboo blend is a lot lighter because again it is a true sport weight yarn. And I have worn it in 80 degree weather and been fine because the wool fiber kind of wicks away the moisture and the bamboo just gives it that very extra drapiness, which I think is very, very important when you are looking for summer friendly yarns, just to have drape and breathability. And for me, especially, the drape is very important because I find that if I'm wearing something that's very stiff or very fitted to my body, uh, I don't enjoy it, and at least in the summer months, because you're already just feeling uncomfortable with the humidity and the heat, so something that is soft and drapey next to your skin during the summer is what I highly recommend. Now whether that, for that, now whether that is wool or cotton for you, I, it's honestly up to you, but do let me know in the comments below which yarns you consider to be summer friendly for you, your environment, and your enjoyment. So these are the sport weight cotton blend yarns. Now I also have a 100% sport weight top that used to be my favorite, and I say used to be because I don't fit in it anymore. And this is also a cotton blend yarn. However, it is a cotton linen blend yarn. This was originally from Forbidden Fiber Co. She's now for, or no, Forbidden Woolery, who is now Forbidden Fiber Co. And I forgot the range of yarn that this was, but it is a cotton linen blend. It's got a very high twist, and I remember the colorway was Chocolate Frog. Now this design is not my own. This is a vintage design from 1983, I believe. And you know I've talked about making another version of this top for ages because I truly love the fit of it, the length of it, 
the stitches that were used, and most importantly, the fact that the pattern combines knitting and crochet. So we've got a knit rib and for the neckband and the bottom, and it was supposed to go on the sleeves, but my um, gauge was so tight that if I put it on the sleeves, I wasn't gonna be able to wear the top. As it is, the neckline is super tight and it doesn't really stretch well. So yes, this is a cotton linen blend, which of course makes the yarn extra drapey. You can see in the camera how it's just kind of falling, water falling as I hold it versus um, this drops, which is, just look at that, the way it falls. Now this drops is 100% cotton, but I just feel that this one on my right hand, which is the cotton linen blend, is a lot drapier. Now I have to give this one a wash. I haven't washed it in quite a while because I haven't used it in quite a while, to be honest. But anyway, this is a, another summer friendly yarn that I would highly recommend. It's a cotton linen blend. Now, if your pattern does not call for a cotton linen blend yarn, I highly encourage you to do a swatch. I know who am I and what am I talking about, but the reason behind that is that linen stretches a lot. I actually recommend that you do your swatch and you wet it and block it, wet it and block it three times. And on that third time, you measure your gauge. And then it'll be a very great guide into what size should you make for the garment that you are choosing. That is again, my recommendation. You don't have to follow what I'm saying. Call me crazy, but try it. Just try it just once. Just humor me and try it just once if you do have a cotton linen blend on stash. Now, I haven't cut my hair. I'm just, I'm wearing a braid tucked up just, just in case anybody was wondering or was distracted by that. So, to summarize, Clarissa's top yarn blends for summer or summer friendly yarn blends. Cotton, fingering weight cotton cashmere, cotton linen, cotton wool, cotton acrylic, fingering weight again, and yeah, or just fingering weight 100% wool. So these are my picks. And you already know from the very beginning that I consider summer friendly weights to be fingering weight and sport weight. DK weight is um, give or take. It depends on the yarn blend and the stitch that you are using. Again, I used it for this flower child top because the pattern in the middle is an open panel, open filet panel. So you get easy breezy right through there. And also just look at that drape guys. There is nothing that feels constricting about this garment, which is an A plus for me. I actually do kind of feel constricted in this one. I do use it in the summer. It's not that I wouldn't use 100% cotton yarn in the summer, but it would definitely just have to be sport weight. I mean, fingering weight. I don't think I've made a garment that is 100% cotton worsted weight or DK weight for summer. The exception for worsted is the Summer Breeze Top or Summer Breeze Vest. I have designed this one in a cotton acrylic blend and I've used this one quite a bit. You've seen me wear it quite a lot um, since the hotter months came around because it's a lovely um, cotton blend. This is, again, a cotton acrylic blend, but it's very, very soft. And I used a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now I tend to have a loose gauge. So I know that some people who've made this pattern have needed to go up to a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook to reach my gauge, but uh, that just gives you extra drapiness in my opinion. And this, again, is not a very fitted garment. It is sleeveless and the stitch is um, a little bit open, so it just allows the air to flow through. And because it is a naturally based fiber, of course, it wicks away moisture and all that goody-goody stuff when you're working with natural weight yarns.
So again, to recap, Clarissa recommends for Summer Friendly Yarns, Fingering Weight Cotton Blends are my top, top choice. Higher key is Cotton Cashmere, Cotton Wool, and Cotton Acrylic Blends. Up to Sport Weight Yarns, DK Weight Yarns, do depend on the fiber combination, the stitch combination, and the hook size that will be used to create the pattern. Let me know in the comments below which of these yarns you've tried before or which yarns you consider to be summer appropriate, summer friendly for your summertime, okay? Your summertime. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun putting it together for you and especially giving you an updated review on all of these yarns that I've worked with before. If you have any questions about any specific yarns that I talked about today, then please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. And if you have if you like these type of videos and you would like to see more yarn reviews, also let me know in the comments below. I have a couple of fun videos coming up for you guys. I have a crochet with me video upcoming and I also have a tutorial for a crochet long tail cast on. They, these will be released uh, about in two weeks time I would say. So if you'd like to stick around and spend some crafty time together then please hit that subscribe button and please do comment because otherwise it is just one crazy lady talking to the camera. Also, before you leave, please do let me know what type of summer weather do you have? Because I honestly feel that we have a Dracula summer. It's... Yeah, it's not an exaggeration. It hasn't properly set in yet. And in case you don't know, Dracula summer is when it is so, so boiling hot that you cannot even step outside, so the only option is to close all your, all your doors and your windows and shut yourself in and just, you know, be a vampire for the remainder of the summer. I do not believe in hot girl summer. I've never had a hot girl summer, so... Hey! But if you've had, I'm very excited for you. And if the heat and humidity does not dampen your fun, then I am very, very, very happy for you. And I admire you. I should do that. I should not let weather dampen my fun. But anyway, here is where I will leave you for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do let me know in the comments below if number one, you're participating in the summer romance count. Number two, what type of summer do you have? Number three, what do you consider to be summer friendly yarns? And number four, please have some fun while you're watching this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's video. Happy crafting. Bye.